Welcome back to the BDG Dynasty Fantasy Football Channel. And of course, we're going to recap the NFL Combine because lots of things happen. And yeah. there's, there's some movement, there's some winners, there's some losers. And we're going to have about all of it. As always, Nicholas, joined by Adam, joined by Andrew. Make sure you're subscribed to their individual YouTube channels as well if you can simply just not get enough Dynasty Fantasy Football chatter. Where do we want to start? Should we just start with Xavier Worthy? I mean, I don't know how you don't start. Yet. We'll timestamp every player that we talk about down below. I think we start with Xavier Worthy, who broke the record for the fastest 40-yard dash ever at the Combine. Four, yeah. two, one, beating John Ross. That's the headline, I think, coming out of the Combine. I mean, it's it's ridiculously fast. If you watch the actual run, like, it was, it was really cool seeing the guys celebrate with him afterwards. Like, it was awesome. It, the whole thing was awesome. It was really cool. Did you see Brett's angle? Brett no. uploaded Dude, a video. that so was let him so cool. The field. He got to shoot the Xavier Worthy run from 10 feet behind him, like a little bit off to the right. Really? And this, oh, you think like the side angle of Xavier Worthy running is fast? <laughs> Wait till you see Brett's shot of it. We'll put it in the video. It's like a little, little road He runner. goes from like near Dude. you to really far away from you in about two yeah. seconds. Yeah. And I think the coolest thing about the clip too is like right as soon as he crosses that line, like the whole stadium just erupts. Yeah. Like it's like yeah. the craziest crowd. That was the Dude. first time that that kind of speed, NFL athlete speed, was put in perspective for me. Yeah. We're like, whoa, someone actually has to guard this fucking man now. <laughs> yeah. Which is crazy. The cushion's about to be wild. So you're going to run a 40 like that at your combine. I'm nice with it. Yeah. Yeah. You might All just right. have to add like three to five seconds, All three right. to five business days. You're commentating, right? Yeah. I and mean, I'll I, get the camera angle of you I, running. I think, um, I think as, as a commentator, I'll have the hype ready to go. Like that was his second one they were expecting. It'll yeah. be ready for Nicholas cool. too. Yeah, so Xavier Worthy runs a 4-2-1. Here's the thing. I dropped my rookie rankings this morning on Twitter. You can go follow me there and I'll be talking about it in tomorrow's individual video as well. Xavier Worthy for me is, I think he's my wide receiver 11 in this class. I want to okay. say he was my wide receiver. I'm going to be honest with you. I actually think I might have had him as my wide receiver 10 prior to the combine. <laughs> he went down? <laughs> so I'm likely the only person. It had nothing to do with him. Just yeah. the, the thing was there's no reason that Xavier Worthy running a fast 40 should move him because when you watch his film, the first thing you notice is like, I like him or I dislike him because of his speed. You know yeah. what I mean? So like, why would I say, hey, you can be my wide receiver nine in this class because his speed is rare, you know, yeah. this rare speed. And then he goes out and runs a fast 40. Am I supposed to be like, oh, he's fast. I didn't know that you fucking idiot. Of course he was fast. And I well, think I was going to say, I think that's the thing too, is like, we didn't expect, Expect him to break the record per se, but we all care. expected him to come in and be really fast. Like we knew the forty was going to be a blazing forty from Worthy. So like, yeah, check the box. He's really fast. In fact, he's probably faster than we thought. For sure. But that doesn't translate to being an awesome elite wide receiver. Yep. Well, and I was just going to ask though. To me, I think that I'm pushing him down one means you must have really loved what somebody did behind. So I I threw Xavier Leggett over Xavier Worthy. Now. <clears throat> Tier together, if, if if Worthy goes, like, pick number 26 first round, Lega ends up being, like, the 57th pick or some shit like that. Swap again. I'll swap them. But from, yeah, like, Worthy is just not I, – I, Worthy's a dude that I would take a stance on right now relative to where I bet the Dynasty community is that I'm, like, for sure fading him because I didn't really like what I saw on tape. And so, this is the reason why the 4-2-1 don't really matter to me. So so here's, here's I guess, the question that I have. Like, for me, I, I even said on the video that dropped last Friday – um, that I think that he needs to run very fast to check the box. He did that, but I, at the same time, he also like showed his speed is maybe arguably the best we've ever seen. Yeah. Now the question basically is: Do we think his game? Because the guys that ran four under, sub four threes, like you could just look at the list. It's, it's super super small. He didn't just do that. He damn near got out of four twos. Yeah. So do we think like that type of different speed relative to the entire league? is going to help at all. Here's the way I'll put it. He could have ran anywhere from a 4-1-8 up to a 4-3-8, and nothing would have changed in my rankings for him. 4-1-7 gets him there, though. If you ran a – look at this list. For the, for the record, so we got John Ross, 4-2-2, two, two, uh, Dante Stallworth, 4-2-2, two, two, Dre Archer, uh, technically running back wide receiver, um, Anthony Schwartz, Henry Ruggs, Marquise Goodwin, and then you get the Rondell Moore. Uh, Tyron Thornton, Nelson. Rondell Moore, J.J. Nelson, Jacoby Ford, Jerome Mathis, Darius Haber Bay, Mike Thomas, Yannon Figures, Vellis Jones, and that's not the good Mike Thomas, Paris Campbell, and he's <laughs> like, yeah. you tell me how any of this is predictive. Being that fast is not an exponential return thing. It doesn't fucking matter. It, right. It, I think here's the thing. It solely on its merit is not 
my, my question is, do you think he's a decent enough or good enough prospect to where that type of speed all of a sudden does level him up? Exactly. That's the question. That, that is the question. My, my yeah. whole thing is, like, the 4 2 one doesn't fucking matter outside of being a really cool event that happened. I agree. And I think one thing, too, just to go into the same story of Xavier Worthy is I knew – he was going to come in light, but he came in, like, way lighter than I had even imagined. Yeah. What was the official 165. weight again? 5'11", 165. 165. And to be quite honest with you, that is, like, also not a massive concern of mine because I think teams have gotten good at, at understanding how to use players like that. If we look at Tank Dell, if we, like, there have been good undersized players. So, so the size, red flag, but not a deal breaker for me. Me just watching the tape and being like, I, he's not a nuanced route runner to me. Uh, for a dude who... Has four two one speed. He had almost half the number of deep ball catches as Keon Coleman did this year. He was like four four passes of twenty plus yards downfield this year. Forty two percent of his targets were on screens. Mm -hmm. So when I see him, I'm like, he's not a well rounded receiver whatsoever. It's cool that he runs this fast, but like, he's gonna be a role player at the next level, in my opinion. So yeah. that's not changing to me based on his combine. Yeah, yeah, I, I, I feel that. The one thing I will say too is that um, no knock against worthy, but he ran technique was absolutely flawless. Insane. You basically don't ever see somebody have a completely flawless technique 40 like that. Yeah. N not not to say that he wasn't fast, but um, that's nah, going mean, to help that's going to help a little it bit. It was the goat 40, dude. You like think, you have to it is you can't the goat, fuck literally. Anything. You think yeah. if he had a third try he could have beat it again? I doubt. I mean, who knows? I probably, say if that. you ask him he probably He was said, looking yeah. like he was getting faster I mean, and faster. Yeah. I, I speaking of uh, cool angles, I like the one where it was him and John Ross running it together yeah. cuz it's like you see it is by the slightest yeah. of margins. I also, wait, on that point, okay, so, like, w when that started, the it was like John Ross was behind him, or was John Ross was behind him and then catches up to him. Yeah. yeah. So the funniest part about, like, how the, uh, just the dynasty community works is, like, people will take victory laps at literally any given Anything. point throughout the offseason. Facts. And within the combine, we're now starting to get points within the combine of where people are taking victory laps. And I'll give you an example of, like, uh, Keon Coleman or someone like that, where Keon Coleman runs a relatively slow 40, 4 6, 1, but then he goes through the gauntlet and runs, they have the, the miles per hour it's thing like on him. Right? He's the best miles per hour runner of that wide receiver, so it's like, oh, like, you took the L on Keon Coleman before, now you're taking the dub. <laughs> and now there are people doing like, this guy had the best five-yard split in the 40-yard dash, even though he had a slow 40. And all that means to me is like, okay, so he had the worst thir uh, five to 40-yard split yeah. then, you know what I mean? Like, you can't just like pick and choose where you want to take wins. Yeah, I agree. And I think it's fun when you're, like, bantering with your boys because we were all talking shit to each other throughout the Combine, too. Like, because all yeah. of us kind of have guys we really like. And, like, I'm giving you shit about Keon. You're giving us shit about Adonai because he's proven it us wrong and things like that. But I was going like, to say, that, that sounded like you were talking about Andrew specifically. but Yeah, but we're, we're really <laughs> all talking shit. But it's fun. But it's I think it's different, too, where you're saying, like, you're out here on Twitter. Everybody's out here victory lapping every single little detail of it's, everything it's throughout the process. It's out of control, it's, it's crazy. You told me to stop sharing anything with you yeah. from Twitter at all. Legit. I, I, I was <laughs> walking around, and me and Adam were just texting back and forth last night. We're like, we're just, like, super happy with how the channel's working out. And I was like, you know yeah. what? Like, we get Andrew off of Twitter, and we're going to go to the next level. <laughs> <laughs> Ceiling like, is the you, roof. It just makes me mad getting on. But, let, yeah, let's Full get back disclosure, the guys. I'm in here every day just showing them outrageous tweets. All right. It's when, just, yeah. And you know to, they're outrageous, but I'm just like, dude, it just gets me so yeah. frustrated. That, when I have to bring it back on the rails, we're in trouble. Sorry, um, sorry. No, you're good. I, I think that, Talk to, us, to the man. point, it, enough, you know? <laughs> Y'all doing too much out there. Um, all right, so Xavier Worthy, obviously the one that I think everybody wants to talk about first. Yeah. Any other polarizing ones or ones that stick out to you as far as just performances at the Combine you wanted to touch on? Polarizing that you want to touch on? It sounds like you want to talk about Keon Coleman. No, well. Because I think that okay, is a big like you did, that is right. a big headline, right? He <laughs> ran a slow 40 for everybody. Yeah, so, so he ran a, what, a 461? 461 four, was what it came one. in on uh, official. Yep. 461, so to me, that's not like a death sentence whatsoever. He's not a dude, again, he's a dude that like you watch his film and you're not like, oh, he's blazing by people. You're like, he is, he separates when the ball is up in the air because yeah. his hands are so good. His jump, like he did fine on the jumps yeah. in the gauntlet. He trusts his hands clearly when he's running across the field. Uh, that the, his combine performance to me was not a win nor a loss. I agree. I would say throughout the process, there was things like the 40 is going to be the talking point because I think a lot of people who watch Keon Coleman, it's the athleticism that stands out. And yeah. so when you go out and run a slow 40, it's like, well, what the hell happened? Yeah. And so I think what that do you think happened? Probably has bad form. <laughs> not, <laughs> That's not probably. Not probably. I mean, you 
go watch him out of the blocks. It's uncomfortable, actually. Yes. It's, it's bad. So but. I think that's part of it, but I, I think that's going to be the thing that people talk about, and that's what I was giving you shit about the other day was the slow 40. But I think overall his day was, like you said, Nick, not good, not bad. It was it was a solid day, I think, Fine. overall. Outside of the 40, he probably wants to forget that, but then otherwise he has a pro day and some other things where he can kind of run a better 40 this time. 100%. Yeah, so Keon, I'm cool with. Yeah, I, I was going to say, I honestly, uh, since you went there, it's, I think it's a good – Another one way to give context. So what did we expect Keon to run? Like sometimes people just like to yap to do it, to victory lap or just like push this narrative. Yeah. What did we expect Keon to run? I, I would, I, if I had to put money on it, I would have said like four or five, five, I think. Uh, I would have been in the four fives as well. I, I had, I think I said over under was mid four fives. I would agree. I'd say like yeah. if he checked, if he hits a four six, I don't even think it's a point of talking. I almost feel like the right way to look at it is kind of like what I brought up with uh, with Xavier Worthy, where it's like anywhere from a four one eight up to a four three eight, not going to change my mind. Keon Coleman, anywhere from like a four four nine up to a four six three, doesn't matter to me. You know what I mean? Like yeah. that's what I expected out of him. If he goes down to like four four one four three nine, I'm like, okay, now we got something else to look yep. at. If he goes up to like a four seven five, I'm worried. You right. Know what I mean, well, like that. That's where I think it's interesting because I don't think. Anyone that was expecting Keon to go out there and blaze didn't really watch what he's put on tape. Exactly. And to me, all he needed to do was just check that he's not slow. Yeah. Yeah. I don't know that it feels like the community thinks he's slow because it was four six one, but then you watch the gauntlet and it's I mean, it's also like there's countless guys that have run four sixes and above and been successful at the wide receiver position. Allen yep. Robinson and Keenan Allen and like the Larry list goes on Larry and on Fitzgerald. and on. Larry, yeah, like the list goes on and on and on about dudes who are talented that I, I feel like the predictability as it relates to like fantasy success, a 40 yard dash don't fucking matter for wide yeah. receivers. It just it's that's what has almost been advertised for the combine up to this point. It's like it's just like a big 40 yard dash contest. That's really what yeah. the combine has been advertised as well, for the last couple of years. I feel like it's interesting. I think this has been the point that you, you can go back and look and see plenty of people in articles talk about it, where, like, the 40-yard dash is almost like we're pushing into this new um, way of the way that you consume media all over the place. But this is like, I don't know, a cassette tape or FM or something. Like, mm -hmm. it, why are we still putting so much stock into something that – when does a player ever go in three-point stance and have to get out of the blocks? Dude, what I, what <laughs> right. I kind of like about it, though, what I, what I do still appreciate – appreciate about the 40 and most of the combine events there it's never like oh perfect this guy can run in a straight line and underwear really fast to me it's like the fact that you're getting all of these guys together in the exact same situation at the exact same time in the exact same environment I agree so with it that. gives you the speed relative to everybody else where you're yes. never going to get like everyone's like oh game speed like this guy hit this it's like okay but you'll never be able to put this other wide receiver in that same situation to see how fast he is relative to that guy so it's like mm -hmm. that is why i appreciate the combine because everybody is same place same time same condition same sleeping conditions getting up at the same time talking yep. to the same people you know what i mean like yep. that's that's why i think it's a really cool event it eliminates so, a I, lot of the variables i agree exactly. I, I think too if you were going to be worried about it like being actually real i would say that you could say that he didn't prep well enough. Like, you shouldn't come out of the blocks like that if you're yeah. prepping that well, right? Yeah. That's, that would be the only negative I would really give to it because I don't think he ran that slow, and that's not his game. But I will say that at the same time, part of the reason I think he ran so well at the gauntlet is because he put so much prep into the jugs, and he, his hands are, are fire. Really so good hands. I, th I think that you can make a case for Keon really being more of a – you should really just keep him where you had him, frankly. 100%. Yeah, I, I think I for me, around. ultimately, didn't move up or down. It's just kind of where I've been viewing Keon – this which, whole time. which for most guys today, that'll be the theme for me is that uh, they're going to have checked the boxes and stay where they are. And that's where, like, I like the combine, but sometimes the narratives are just, what are we doing? Why yeah. are we getting crazy for no I reason? I feel here? like if you, if you had to move your rankings around drastically over A after the combine, I think that's fine. But I think that just means you're terrible at evaluating them pre combine. Yeah. is basically what that comes in. And I'll to. shout out my guy, Felix Sharp from Campus to Canton. Speed isn't how Keon Coleman wins anyway. Give Andrew a little X action. If your position has changed based on his 40 time, you didn't have conviction in the first damn place. And, Andrew, let me tell you, I'm not fucking leaving. <laughs> there you go. Keon Hype Train, Adam. Let's All go. Right, so just to cover some of the other top prospects that didn't really perform at the Combine. So Marvin Harrison Jr. didn't perform. Uh, Malik Neighbors didn't perform. Most of the top quarterbacks, Caleb, yep. uh, Jane Daniels, um, uh, Drake May, none of them really like performed through or did any of that cool stuff. So that's why we're skipping past them. Bowers, no. Like, Bowers yeah, didn't. There's right. a lot. Um, so in terms of like, we're talking about receivers that didn't move. Pre combine, I had Adonai Mitchell at four, Brian Thomas at five. Post combine, I got Adonai Mitchell at four, Brian Thomas at five. Both of them put up the perfect combine. Yeah, they me. had Goaty. 
Incredible right? combines. Adonai Mitchell came in at 6'2", 205, 4, 3, 5, 40. All of his athletics, all of his jumps, everything, explosion, off the fucking charts. Like, I, I, what I'm most proud of, I think, of, of how high I was on him. I love this. Was proud. the fucking Terry McLaurin comp. Like I That's feel, fair. I feel so good about the fact that I was like, listen, when you, why don't you just hold it? Yeah. Sure. Oh, I guess you don't have the fucking. Uh, yeah, you know, you, you ain't hands. I'm not like sure. I don't, I don't, I'm like Ricky Bobby. <laughs> I'm right like now. we're like talking, and I just. <laughs> I'm like I'm like Ricky Bobby right now. I, I don't know. I don't know what to with do my with hands. my hands. Um, you want to swap? Let's here. Let's swap. Let's swap. Are you sure? Yeah. Right. Give me the go. El Jefe. Jefe. <laughs> just rip. Yeah. So so with with Ad and I like what I've been basically saying was he's he's Terry McLaurin to me because when you think of Terry. You, I feel like most people probably don't even know that Terry ran a four three five. It's an incredible speed, but when you think of him, you're like he's just a sick possession route runner receiver, you know. And that's how I thought of Ad Mitchell. And I'm like, but he's got the speed in his bag in case yeah. he needs to break it out. Um, oh, he broke it out. He broke it out. Four three five was crazy at two hundred and five <laughs> yeah. pounds. And then Brian Thomas don't, six. Don't don't slide him four three four. four th- oh, we came in at the official four three four. That Julio. That's that Julio yeah. type. I feel, I feel like at, at least for me, Ad and I actually moved up. I was. I will admit I was probably lower on consensus, but I, his athletic profile to me definitely makes it uh, jump a tier up for me. Yeah. There's no well, way. He, he's one of the few people that moved up for me. I would say that's probably for most people because, Nick, you've been the Adonai guy. You were high on him. Hank. So Hank. everybody else wasn't necessarily having him as wide receiver four in this class. You yeah. did. I think for a lot of people, especially people viewing the combine for the first time, really putting their eyes on these prospects, they probably saw Ad and I work out and said, "You know what? This guy's pretty good." And I, I wish I dropped my rankings. I have it in like video on record, obviously, yeah, but like did. I wish I dropped my rankings like a month ago. You I'll know? vouch for you and had and had <laughs> and had people being like Ad Mitchell up before ew, yeah. and now everybody's on it. But yeah. Brian Thomas is kind of like a consensus four or five guy as well. Yeah, six three, two hundred and nine pounds, four three three. This motherfucker came to ball. Dog, he came I, prepared. Where you got Brian Thomas? In your I have him five. Five? Yeah. Where you got him? I got him four. So okay. uh, my tier my tier two now is those two guys. Yep. Um, and I, I still include Troy in there. I, I don't think Troy here, – here's what I'll say. Brian Thomas and Adonai Mitchell didn't just check the boxes. They killed it. Like, yes. They smacked. And I, I think um, Troy Franklin almost like relative to the guys that ran the combine – is might be dismissed because he just checked the box, but he didn't. I, go, that's what go I ham. took away from Troy Franklin's combine, and we kind of talked about it when we were sitting on the couch, like just watching them. It was like he came in, he did what he was supposed to do. It's what we expected, but he didn't really come in and like impress us by any means. Yeah, I, th- I think he was. I would almost go as far as saying he was like a little bit disappointing in the athletic department. I expected a tiny bit better in the forty. Like I, I almost expected him. What you expect? Four, that? I expected high four threes. And he came in in four fours. It was, it was a four four one. I know. For me, it was like the splits and the, and the other stuff that I felt were a little disappointing. Whereas like, Ad Mitchell, I knew he was fast, but four three four is crazy. That's above and beyond. Brian Thomas knew he was fast as fuck. Four three three, a little bit higher than I expected, but. Um, I but I think that's the thing too, though. Is like I on tape, I think Troy Franklin looks as fast as those guys. I agree. But he didn't test as fast as those guys. Yeah, I'd agree with that. The other thing too was uh. Troy Franklin actually was one of the slower in the gauntlet, which is kind of interesting. That's, weird. that's right? what I'm saying. Like most of the when you start looking at things outside of the forty, you're like, Ew, what is what's Troy doing? Yeah. But it kind of was like that Jalen Hyatt effect. Where like yeah. Jalen Hyatt was supposed to be like people were like, You gonna run the four twos. It's like and then he ran what did he end up with? A four four one also? Yeah, it was four four one. Yep. It was it was it was disappointing relative to like the amount of speed height that Hyatt had coming out. Yeah. Um, I just I wanna give like context too to like the Brian Thomas and Adonai Mitchell, right? They're like Adonai Mitchell ran what Jamar Chase did, and there's only been since. So they started doing the laser in 1999. So I had all the combine data pooled since 2000. Damn. So Wait, you see that? You see who's in between Ad Mitchell and Jamar Chase? Yeah, the goat. Bo Melton. Bo, Bo Melton. Melton. <laughs> you Seventh mean Milton? round pick from Rutgers. <laughs> there is two Rutgers guys on this board. Hell yeah. How you doing? Rutgers are different. Um, but <laughs> like, here's the thing: uh, most of the people ahead. Okay, so there's been. Those guys are top 40 combine performers at the receiver position, period. Like, to give you an idea of spoiled. So you don't just have the number one. You have those two guys. And if you go up the, on this list, almost none of the guys up ahead of them are relevant. You're talking about talented young kids that are blazing in this mm-hmm. class. Like, yeah. it's – well, I, I don't think I've ever th- seen a class anywhere near this. That's point. why I'm like – that's why I'm – with those guys, the reason I like them is, like, speed – is something that's I'm, I'm glad they have, but I don't feel like that's 
the end all be all for their game. Yeah. Whereas like for me, in my opinion, that's what it felt like when I was watching Xavier Worthy. But when I watch Adonai Mitchell, I'm like, good route runner. Brian Thomas, explosive, like downfield playmaker, like what he he brought upon that. And a lot of these guys on this list were that kind of guy coming out of college. Yeah. So those types of guys I think are a little bit harder to hit on because if they're not in the right place with the right quarterback, like, you know, we uh, saw Bo Nix fucking you can balls out there and couldn't the other throw thing thirty too yards. Is like Adonai Mitchell on everything that he tested for was is awesome. like God. Yeah. He got like a nine point nine seven RAS score, right? Like it was yeah, like bro, he he looked like DK, but no problems in and out of routes. Yeah. 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 Are you where you said you're still with Troy Franklin in that tier with Brian Thomas? Yeah, I got him at six though. Do you, where do you have him? Uh lower than that for sure. I got him down at seventeen overall, wide receiver nine. So oh, I had a wide receiver nine. Okay. <laughs> we both looked like what I was the about hell? to be like, okay. No, no, no. Okay, he's he's wide receiver yours. nine. Yeah. I got uh who you got then in between? So I got Keon Coleman six. I got Lab McConkey seven. Oh, Jalen Polk eight. Uh Troy Franklin nine. nine. Xavier Leggett ten. Okay. Yeah, I'm still there where you're at with Troy in that tier. And to be honest, like full disclosure, coming into the combine, like I thought Troy, I liked everything that he put on tape. I think he's good against zone coverage. Like I like I said, he looked way fast on tape too. Like say, say it with your chest. That's I your boy. I thought, yeah, he is my boy. I've said it on on tape. It's in the confessional Gut to the trivia Troy, vlog. Franklin I love too. Troy. But I thought he had the ability to get to where you have Adonai. Like I thought he could be wide receiver four in this class. Yeah. I thought he could be in that top five. I think after the combine, not that he's moving down my board, he's still in that tier. But I don't think see, he's going to pass Troy, Brian see, that's Thomas. That's the thing with Troy guys. Franklin is it feels like so much is riding on his athleticism and his explosion that the combine is almost like he can't really gain anything. Well, there. and I, I just think too, like mm-hmm. the things that I love about Troy is that he is a very good route runner. He's very good against zone coverage. Like I can't understate that. Mm-hmm. And the fact that like the NFL these days is primarily like 70% zone coverage in defense. Like I think he's going to do very well at the next level. It's going to depend on landing spot and the ability to kind of scheme for him and things like that. But I, I do like Troy Franklin. I'm just not moving him down, but I wasn't impressed. He's not going to be in my top four. I don't think well, anymore. Yeah, but I mean, again, the impress is like, okay, you can only take so much dopamine hit. You got like, <laughs> you know, all, everything was ridiculous there. He, he yeah. checked the boxes. I think that's the big takeaway for me is that Troy Franklin didn't, you know, like set the world on fire because there were so many yeah. great performances. But a four four one to me is again we're talking like Nick are talking range of outcomes that's fast. where he would run. He's that absolutely is in the range that's that fine. I need. Yeah. Yeah. Any, anywhere from a four three two up to yeah. a f- like a four four three is like as long as he didn't get upper four fours. I probably I don't even I'm I'm good on yeah. Troy. Let's talk about. Lad, because you brought his name up, I think he impressed at the combine for sure. Because he was no someone, he, yeah. he's like really quick twitch, great route runner, dude. I, I wasn't three, sh- nine. I wasn't sure what his long speed was going to be because I remember I was like watching him. I was like, he's pretty fucking fast. They they didn't really ask him to run a ton of like downfield, just straight like speed routes, probably because like his size, you know, you don't really want to throw him jump balls type yeah. shit. So I wasn't sure what he was going to come in at, but I remember seeing, I think on like the prize picks and underdogs, they were like putting him at like a four five. Four five three, kind of thing. So I was like, okay, maybe he's closer to the mid four fours. But yeah, four four or four three nine. Four three nine. I, I I love um, having this list, and this was one I was waiting to get to. So you can see they're super close together here. Lad McConkey and Chris Olave. Yes. Tell me the difference here, okay? Four three nine, four three nine, thirty six, thirty six in the vertical. Mm-hmm. Raw jump one twenty four, one twenty four. Like we think Chris Olave is a very good athlete, no? Yeah, we do. I mean, to me, if Lad, Lad is proving that he is different. Like, he's very athletic. So and I, to even see that, I think that the community is going to start to really change their tune on Build-wise, too, height and weight is, like, very similar as well. Like, they, they pretty sure. much came in identically. Yeah, they were uh, – let's see here. He can't – but Lad, I have my reservations about Lad on the outside, though. Like, Alave is a pure outside dominant receiver – I, I ain't there with Lad. I think I, Lad can play anywhere, but I think he's best in the slot. If so, he's in the slot, he's going to be real good. Well, I, I was just saying from the athletic measurables. I don't necessarily think that, uh, that he should be outside exclusive, but I do think that he's going to have, with that type of athleticism, as he develops, mo- a lot of versatility. I For think sure. he's probably going to be best like deployed in the slot. And I think as zone coverages are going up in the, the NFL, man, we're starting to see guys that are really good in the slot that aren't athletes thrive. Yeah. Amon we're, Ross St. Brown eats. Puka yep. Nakua just ate. Yep. Like, this guy with that type of athleticism. If they put him in the be, slot, he'll be, be ridiculous. He'll be goaded. Where do you think would be, like, the best type of scenario for him to be get, like, get that type of role and be able to excel there? Everywhere in the slot. 
Um, <laughs> Everywhere, but there's not like a team. I think he's probably going to end up in that second round, don't you think? That or, early second, I, early two. I th- if I had to, yeah, if I had to put money on him, I would say he's from 33 to 40 in that range. I know we talked about it out there with Gut. He's a Panthers fan. He said I Panthers. actually think that's a good landing spot. Yeah, I, he can go in there and the command targets immediately. Yeah, take that Thielen role. Yeah, I like that. Uh, honestly, out in Atlanta, I feel like that's not a bad I landing spot either. Spot you talk too. about like Drake London possession, uh, like him as a, a sparky slot little slot guy. Let's fucking run it, yeah. You guys Actually, take Kirk they, Cousins they get, from us? They get their quarterback. <laughs> we, might. we just might. You they just get their might. quarterback elsewhere. They get him early round two. That's actually spicy. I think that's a I good like spot. That. I don't – I mean, is there a bad spot for him? I guess if there's, like, terrible quarterback play and the situation's awful. But if he's playing yeah. the slot, I don't know that there's a horrible spot. Or a team that has, like, a guy who's primarily a slot one already that, and then they That is my in. concern. If they try to shove him on the outside, I'm like, I, I really don't think he's prepared for that. Let me ask you, level. like, we, we talk about bad landing spots for a lot of guys. What if he ends up in New England? I – the only thing I don't like is, like, I don't know who the QB is. Now, obviously, if it's a rookie QB like Drake May or Jaden Daniels, they could probably lean on a guy like Ladd. I think he would instantly get a lot of target, a lot of volume. Damn, what, what did I see? I, that, I heard a rumor or saw something on Twitter about, like, a QB that New England might be going after. Oh, I can't think of it. It, it was con- – oh, Baker. It was Baker. Baker. Yeah. That would be weird. Baker and Ladd? <laughs> well, Ladd, Ladd, I love that. Ladd yeah. could kind of occupy uh, Jacoby Myers' role. Yeah. Kobe was like a half slot, half outside, good route runner. Yeah. Like he'd basically bench Juju. <laughs> exactly. Like I could see Ladd in New England for sure. Yeah. I, I just think like the reason I wanted to use that one is I felt that if we get some of the guys that go really early to New England, we're like, ah, oh, we don't like that. Yeah. I don't feel like that's the same with Ladd going to you, New England. You didn't see and, and the, I, I think that's a good illustration of I, I'm not tripping about his landing spot that much, yeah. honestly. You didn't see the Julian Edelman, Danny Amendola, Ladd McConkey as like the third of the trilogy? Yeah. yeah see, they're, <laughs> they're, he's as, just as such as a different as, player than those. As soon as he's <laughs> gone. Yeah. All right. What what else did you think? I know you, we got we're getting all Anders guys, Troy, Ladd, who well, else you want? <laughs> you guys you guys watch any Roman Wilson tape? Because we got him I'll right be above honest, him. He's one guy line. that I, I want to watch more of. He, he seems Again, maybe one of the most polarizing. I've seen some have him top five. Yeah, I'm not who there. I'm not going to out people like that out here. I, I know. mean, if, if it's out on Twitter, it's already about. out. Uh, well, Ray, I know Ray has uh, him in top five. Did he life. go to the Senior Bowl? Yes. Yes. Okay, that makes yeah. sense. Anyone I've talked to about Roman Wilson that likes if him went to the, the Senior, senior bowl. bowl. Yeah. Ro- Rome. Yeah. Like, uh, uh, but I've seen some people that were at the Senior Bowl that aren't as bullish. Yeah, I'm yeah. not in on Rome. He's. I don't know. He felt like a uh, Roman, is it, is it not Rome. <laughs> yeah, true. Yeah. Is it his tape? For sure. Yeah. Um, I, I don't even remember if I looked at his numbers, to be quite honest with you. But he gave me a lot of Xavier Worthy vibes where, like, his best asset was for sure his long speed, not a good nuanced route runner, in my opinion. I also think the thing about Roman Wilson, too, that doesn't get talked about as often is, like, a late breakout age and an older prospect coming in. He went back for his senior year, COVID year as well, like, things like that. Like, he's a little bit older of a prospect coming out. Yeah. Yeah, that's fair. I mean, I will say like four three nine. I'm sure it doesn't hurt his stock. It's to me, it doesn't. I don't think it I, 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 ex- I expected him to run fast. Yeah, I, don't, I didn't. I actually think uh, I see Darius Slayton down there. I kind of feel like Darius Slayton was might have been one of the comps I put down on him. Where okay. it's like, there you go. If he comes Darius Slayton, like cool, he's gonna make some good plays in the NFL. But like, yeah. is anyone really trying to use rookie picks on Darius Slayton? Like maybe third, fourth, whatever. But like. I I bet that Darius Slayton's on some people's waiver wires right the one, now. The one I wanted to get to in that same range, and you already kind of touched on him, uh, so I want to hear you. I want to hear you yap about Xavier Leggett. Xavier Leggett's, yeah. I watched his tape right before the combine yesterday. I was impressed given like his build and his size, six uh, one two twenty one. I think he came in as the heaviest wide receiver. Now you know what's interesting though is he was listed as six three in South Carolina, so he came in two inches shorter. That's fine, yeah. Six yeah. one two twenty one though. You got that yeah. like that DK build. He he feels like to me a better version of Jonathan Mingo. I wasn't a huge Mingo guy coming out. Um I saw like the upside was obviously there tantalizing because you're a prospect that raw with like the that type of like speed with that build. Uh Leggett feels like a better version of that where he's like I, I think the stop, uh, start stop speed is there. I think he runs good comeback routes. I think he's like change of direction is pretty good. And then um, he's super good at high pointing balls. Like yeah. you could throw the ball yeah. in like random ass places and he's probably coming down. I, I wrote that I down as that his point. best attribute is his ability at the contested catch point, like being able to come down with that ball. I think that's very friendly for, especially like if he gets into a situation where they have a rookie quarterback, being able to have that ability for your rookie quarterback, that's going to be good. But I think to me, he feels very much like one of those – Guys, you probably spend a mid to late second round pick on, and he's that kind of boom bust type receiver that he could very well be Terrace Marshall Jr., yep. or he could end up hitting and giving well, you something decent. 
Yeah, and that's the thing with him. I, I actually, I felt like this was going to happen where I don't like a lot of things about his profile just from like an analytic perspective. But I'm like, when I saw him, I'm like, dude, this guy is going to be a freak athlete. Yeah. And the combine is going to make me want to be in on him. But I'll just, I'll say a lot of the times when that is the, this is probably boxing him too much into a category. But when that's been the case, I all, that, that person feels like it misses a lot. And I told myself I'm not going to buy yeah. into Xavier Leggett after the combine this year. Well, and I think the thing is too, like he's going to end up in a tier as well with other receivers that we all probably feel a lot more comfortable with. And so there's probably a reason why in a lot of our rookie drafts that we do, we're going to be passing on him to go for a different receiver in that tier. That That is honestly, that's not a bad point because the, the, the one thing about him is his cost because there's so many good players in this class might be palatable. Yeah, that's yeah. fair. I mean, look at, again, he's a guy that I don't, I don't think he changed much at the combine for me because when you watch the film, you're like, he's just like a crazy raw beast, you yeah. know? So like when he comes in and runs this, not overly surprising realistically, but the analytics will definitely pull him down a little bit. I got Xavier Leggett over the other Xavier. Like I would take him over worthy, I think. Barring crazy draft capital differences. Yeah. Bars. Though. Or yeah. Xavier over the what other is it? Xavier. No Dang. holds bar. <laughs> no, holds, no holds barred. <laughs> That's a callback. Yeah. I, I, I just want to give one quick shout out to Jalen Polk, who mm. he un- ended up running like a 4 or 5 2. He came in. He's a really good size receiver, teammate of Rome, obviously. Uh, Polk was a guy that like wasn't overly obsessed with on tape. I thought he did a lot of things well. Um, I thought he gave me like some T Higgins vibes where he's a possession guy that you could throw to downfield. He's got high pointing balls. Obviously you mix and match that with Michael Penix's like Mm -hmm. deep ball accuracy and you're, and you're going to get some magical plays out there. And then he came in and he's one that wouldn't have surprised me if he ran like a four, six, five. And I would be like, ah, but he ran a four five two, And I feel like there's not a ton of flaws in who he is. That maybe means like a safe floor and maybe not the high of a ceiling, but I I, I like Jalen Polk and I'm, I'm cool. Like sitting him there in, in my top 10. One more little shout out for a guy who had a pretty good day. Ricky Pearsall had a pretty good combine. There good we go. Call. We got to yeah. get Pearsall on. There. I really like Ricky what P, Pearsall put baby. Together. Where are you guys at on Ricky P? I I mean, honestly, I think I would end you? up. Really? Okay. I mean, I just feel like I'm starting to get in on. There's so many guys in this class to like. This I, class it's is awesome. Crazy. It's a great Dude, class. I think I would be. I'd be willing to pull the trigger early third round in with Pierce Hall in my rookie yeah. draft. We'll, we'll get to. We'll get to that. He's my twelve. Yeah. He's we'll my wide receiver twelve at pick twenty five. So okay. that's yeah. the real one yeah, basically yeah. right now. So yeah, I'm, I'm I'm in on Ricky P for show. I got him at 13. Let's talk some, some RBs. Let's yeah, talk the I think RB position. The first thing that we want to talk about, we talk about a lot in the office, Braylon Allen didn't run. Braylon Allen came in at 235. He did not run, so. Coward. Fuck him. Dude. Coward. I think we all wanted to see him run. Facts. Who didn't want to see anybody do anything at the combine? <laughs> I mean, we all didn't Fair want point. to see him run, actually. Fair point. Yeah. Uh, Fair well, point. okay, so we got Jonathan Brooks, who's obviously recovering from the ACL, didn't right. run. Weighed in at 216, which is like, okay, he's not doing anything right now, so he doesn't have to maintain a 207. Can we, can we start with the, uh, the Zab- not not Xavier-worthy level, but, like, uh, no one really knows much about Grendo, Isaac Grendo, but dude ran a 4-3-3, one of the fastest. Yeah times we've ever seen from a running back so he's yeah. like the one guy that he, he every year there's like the combine warriors where you're like okay i need to dive into him after yeah. the combine he's that guy for me where me too i don't know much about grando at all have you dug into the tape so at all for him not, not, not much on tape uh guy of south Harmon, check it out mike actually shouted out on a campus to canton podcast he's like sleeper for the for the combine to watch, that's the guy. Six foot two twenty one ran a four three three so forty one. That's my, that's my he, he was split in the backfield um, at Louisville, and it's funny because I was actually my I have some family that lives down there, and I caught a game where he had over a hundred yards. But that was he doesn't normally get that type of work. Mm-hmm, um, mm-hmm. So I didn't know much about him. I, I definitely have to go back and watch more tape. For but sure. I, I just I'll just say that this is one of those guys in the running back position as a whole for me is starting to become more like is the landing spot intriguing, and what's your realistic path to workload and yeah. to me just understanding that he is a guy that's four three three, depending on what his cost is if he goes to a place where he's you know what if there's an injury into him in front of him that's a guy that can take a very, random a random play to the house very similar someone very close to him on this list but like a keaton mitchell right like keaton mitchell was a fast but, guy but, performed at the combine then he got opportunity because of injury but he's like yeah, but 50 keaton, pounds i was just gonna say but keaton mitchell's like a a, a, a tiny bug back. yeah yeah he, he, he's like a little this dude is well no, you know who isaac rando really like the trajectory he's on right now is the isaiah pacheco trajectory i actually love we're like that. no one really knew that Rutgers, yeah. like small and then all of a sudden he comes in at fucking 220 pounds runs a four three eight or whatever it was and you're like Oh there fuck! Who what? is this guy? We're gonna have to get Nick some Rutgers gear. I'm just I'm putting <laughs> it out there, brother. You, I, like I, I had friends that went to Rutgers. I used to go out there and party all the time. 
Got to get him out of this jumpsuit. <laughs> Rubber <laughs> I like that. This stays on me at all times. You uh, don't leave the skin. I mean, I, that's actually a good call. And look what happened with Pacheco. I mean, he ends up in the landing spot. There's always oh, a first Seventh round, round pick. And then imagine having, yeah. imagine using a fourth round rookie pick on Pacheco two years ago, like the He'd value that happy. he gave. <laughs> I, I'm, I'm in way too many leagues. I actually cut back some. I had to do it. Good and, stuff. Uh, yeah. <laughs> Another L, one. L, L, L but dub. How about that? <laughs> it was an L first. It, like getting rid of kids, man. I hated doing that. Yeah. But <laughs> point is, um, like I saw in so many leagues that like Pacheco actually went on the waiver wire. He went through four or five rounds and didn't even get drafted in certain drafts, man. Yeah. So um, he, he's a guy I think that Landis back could be massive. So, for him. so yeah, he's an interesting prospect. And then like, we didn't have the top two guys, or at least my top two run. But then we had yeah. we had that tier. You had a guy that you were not impressed with very much, Audric. Audric. Audric Estime. Was anybody impressed with him yesterday? So Well, I, I think that's the thing, because, like, in your video, I think the comment section, a lot of people were like, dude, you got to watch Audric. You got to have gotta, Estime yeah. in here. And then he goes out and does this. This and is you're why like, you can't eh. be listening to the YouTube comments all the time, because they don't know what they're <laughs> looking for. They don't know what to look for. And there are a lot of people on Twitter who are like, Audric Estime is a top three back for me. He's David Montgomery. He's this. He's that. L- legitimately, the f- – and – Listen, I'm I'm wrong on some shit, but like I'm watching Audric and I'm like I like him. He's got good vision. He's got he understands how to like leverage his blocks and shit. But the first thing I wrote down was like his brain moves faster than his feet do. Like I'm kind of concerned about whether or not he's like athletic enough to do it at the next level. And that's kind of what we saw here. The dude so he came in at two twenty one four seven one. His vert was great though, thirty eight mm-hmm. inches for that size. But regardless, like that that's teetering on that like you're probably an unserious running back at the next level to really uh, to break in. But we do have LeGarrette Blunt at 4'7". Yeah. Well, I think we kind of said, too, like, calling card would kind of be, like, a team's goal line back. Yeah. I, I just want to highlight, too, like, I'm, I'm – obviously, Audric Estime was a uh, – Loser. I would say <laughs> – yeah, probably a loser. <laughs> Definitely not a winner. How about that? In the combine. But I, the reason I wanted to talk uh, landing spots and just the running back position as a whole, I, it reminds – this not particularly the same player, very different, but – Kyron Williams, to me, was one of the worst losers at the Combine that I can remember mm-hmm. in recent memory. Facts. And I remember, like, oh, dude, I'm out. Like, sub 200, destroy, like, the wrong way. was awful in every metric. He ran, like, a 4.65 at 194. This guy just took the most opportunities at a, at a running back position in the entire NFL yeah. and thrived. Kyron's probably, like, the one disconnect that, like, is impossible to figure out. Well, I, I totally agree. I'm, by the way, I'm not advocating now that Audric Estime is a great um, running back. You could be in on him, awful. bro. Speak but, on it. No, but my <laughs> point is that, like, I'm not probably – does Audric Estime deserve to go down? Probably, yes. But I'm not, I'm not like, going to be uninterested because he ran a 4.71 if it, the cost is really, really cheap. There's a cheap cost of place, opportunity, all these things that could get you interested again. But I, I think one more thing – and not like you said, you're not calling Audric – Kyron Williams, but I do think that most people enjoyed Kyron's tape a lot more than we liked Estime's tape well, when he was coming out of Notre Dame. I don't, yeah, I don't think anyone would disagree with that. And, and again, my my point is just that the combine as a whole shouldn't be. I just don't think we should be moving players like drastically o- outside of multiple ranges of tiers because yeah. of the combine. And, and I well, don't think he did well. I think well. this is kind of like a rare. I would I would disagree just in in situations like this where okay. Like the four seven feels like a benchmark for me when it when it comes to like running backs where I'm like, okay, if you are a dude who is gonna be relying on like bigger players or whatever, and I'm like, we're we're seeing stuff like that, there's just not a lot of hits once you get to the four seven. Like you're just not That's athletic fair. compared to the other players on the NFL field. Mm-hmm. So like this does feel out of the range of like I'm kind of comfortable with Estime now. I mean, fair. to that point, it's it's fair because uh, there is not. Well, first of all, just it's, since it's, since there's been anyone running, there is not a there's a small amount of backs since 2000 to even run. And even the names slower. Even the names that you could kind of point out, be like, oh, he was like cool in fantasy for a second. I saw like a Matt Asiata, Rex it was just Burkhead. Like, right, like Rex is a different breed where he just became a pass catching back in New England. And uh, Matt Asiata just had like shout a shout out Asiata. He had a crazy goal line role in Minnesota yeah. like one year that made him like relevant. It's like cool, I like. Think- one Outside more guy that, on there was, got. like, Daryl yeah. Williams had, like, a couple games of fantasy relevance yep. in Kansas City. Uh, that, that's I what think, I mean. That's that range of people. L- and let me actually say to the point you're making, I'm not expecting or ever thinking Audric Estime is going to have Kyron Williams in his range of outcomes. To clarify that. It, yeah. He's a body that if he got an opportunity, I would put him in my lineup in a spot start situation yeah. in fantasy, and that's really all. I will say what's interesting expect. is, like, he's not completely unathletic because his, his jumps and his, like, burst score are almost 90th percentile for his weight. Mm-hmm. They're really good. He's also only 20 years old, so he's yeah. young as shit. 
Yeah. And, you know, that I that at least gives you a lot, uh, like, some time to hit on that one year of, like, really good situation. You know mm-hmm. what I mean? But you know who was uh, goaded also at 469? Oh, Arian. Oh, yeah. Arian was, like, one of the worst <laughs> testers at the Combine. Um, Ever. It didn't fucking matter. He I think go. another guy who didn't test very well that you weren't particularly high on in your running back video was Bucky Irving. Talk to him. Bucky. Uh, you talk to him. You're the one who didn't like him that much. Yeah. But let's, I mean, let's talk about the testing. Do we have the numbers here, Adam? Uh, yeah. So he, okay. So he came in at 192, 455. His vert, not good. Uh, his broad, below average. Like, just not a very athletic back. Yeah. And this was like one of my concerns where the analytics community, you just look at him and you're like, so many explosive plays, all this and all that. Like, you watch a film and you immediately see, Oregon running the spread offense where there's like three defensive linemen on every play uh, on a Bucky Irving run. And I watched him and I was like, I don't really see any sp- like real speed here. He's like kind of bursty, you know, and like cool, whatever. But again, like my, my comp room was Kenneth Gainwell. So I'm like mm. way better in college. Stats are crazy. Like padding the stats because of the offense kind of thing. Better real life player where like you put him in New England, maybe he'll catch 65 passes or something like that. But like, He's not a serious, like, three-down prospect. Yeah, I think even... I think that's de- the last part you said is definitely fair. Yeah. yeah. I, I, agree. I, I think even just looking at the list of guys around him right here, like, there's names like Jalen Warren, but he's I was heavier say, than him, tested better a little bit. What do you think about Jalen Warren as a comp? It's not bad. Just just asking. On the high end, probably. That, probably that's interesting. End. I think Warren's more explosive than Bucky is. And it, yeah. it, shows, it shows slightly, by the way. They both yeah. ran 4 five, five, a, a little better in the vertical and a little better in the broad jump. 119 versus 115. Vertical was 31.5 to 29.5. Another gut, name that's... Gut, gut brought out Alvin Kamara, and shout out to Gut. Um, that's crazy to me. Now, here, here's the thing. Alvin Kamara, to your point of the burstiness, like, dude, Kamara was a 39.5 on a vertical and a 131 on a broad jump. Yeah. There's a pretty, at least on the combine, those measurables show a different level of explosion yeah, from Kamara it's a than, gap. than Bucky. So I, I think another name that pops up here, too, that I think is somewhat look at the comparable comp is Chase Edmonds. Ryan. What do you guys Ooh. think about that Chase Edmonds one? Do I have uh, Chase on there? Or no? I had Chase for somebody else, uh, I think. So, hi, Nick, by the way, high end for Nick. Uh, I'll read it. Bucky Irving has Kyron Williams, Geo, and Devin Singletary high end. Mid, Kenneth Gainwell, and Michael James, Theo Riddick. Low end now. Do you, you want to fill in your low end since you didn't have one? Uh, I didn't have one just because he does feel like I, I kind of feel like Kenneth Gainwell like has been it's fucking low terrible, enough to be yeah. honest. Yeah, like it, it could just like be some Gainwell's sh- pretty low. <laughs> yeah, I mean, yeah, like yeah. I can go much lower I than also, that. Where you're getting fucking fourteen yards a game. Yeah, I did want to highlight too that uh, Eddie Lacy ran a four five five, so I don't feel like the hate <laughs> is like that surprising. I feel like this four five five is just a not no go for Nicholas. Yeah, yeah. It, it's it's not great. I, I mean, I I thought he was kind of a. a Bad athlete, I guess, but... So you feel like this confirmed what you watch overall, right? Yeah. Yeah. Bucky's a dude that I'm super, super happy, like, standing on business on and being like, if people... There are a lot of people that had him, like, top five before the combat. Stand on business, That's what I'm saying. Let me ask, because I think there's there's a lot of people that I've at least kind of read through what they said, if I'm uh, trying to paraphrase. They think he could be a very good just receiving back in the NFL. Do you see that? He's a a very good pass catcher, for sure. Which is why I say Kenneth Gainwell. That that would have some value in your PPR leagues, especially. I mean, I think, obviously, we're not spending, like, second-round picks on Kenneth Gainwell. I mean, people did spend second-round picks on Kenneth Gainwell, but we wouldn't want to. Hopefully, we're all playing in PPR by now. Yeah, hopefully. Keep going. I was just interjecting. No, you're good. Yeah. That's that's all I had. That's all I had was that it would have value. I mean, I think... If we want to talk about another guy, too, that I think a lot of people are going to want to talk about, he's one of the bigger names, maybe not one of the bigger players in this class. Okay. It's going to be Blake Corum. Blakey. Blakey, baby. baby. So he came in at 205, I think. Ran a 4 5 three forty. So not great, not disappointing. Better um, than Bucky. <laughs> I, can I – I mean, if, if you told me I had to pencil in, he's going to be very close to what I thought he was Check going to do. Check the boxes, right? Check the boxes for sure. I'm, I'm interested to see where he lands in the NFL. So I could see a team liking him, but I could also see teams looking at him and being like, he's simply just like not athletic enough for us to to put him in that in that like day two range. He could be a guy in our backfield. He could like, be a guy in our backfield, which yeah. I think is 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 real. I think that's yeah. kind of like who he is. Now, now he'll never he make goes, the wrong play. He'll never make the wrong play. If he reunites with Harbaugh in Los Angeles, how high are we moving him? What round? I would say day two, probably let's second say day round. Two. Let's say day two. He get what what round of the NFL draft? Second. Second to round NFL draft. What's the difference if it was second and third? Let's yeah, ask I mean, uh, it matters. I think to me. Does I'm it? just saying, what's the difference? For, I'm saying, what what is the difference for you? Like, okay, second so, round so the way round I look three. at, uh, you're a first round draft pick. You are immediately the starter. You are a second round draft pick. You have immediate opportunity to compete for the starting position. 
Uh, if you are a third round pick, I think you have an opportunity to uh, carve out a role in year one. Okay. Um, and okay. then anything day three is kind of like down the path that way. So I do think the two I and like three that. matter because I think, yeah, I think two is like you're you're drafting the second round to compete for the starting job yeah. immediately. But you might I, not win it though. I, I think, think by and large that's actually a pretty good benchmark. Obviously, there's there's ex- examples where that may not be perfect, but I think that as a benchmark is a really good. Call. Yeah, and I, I do think that him going to Los Angeles is a Pretty decent scenario. I mean, we know how much Jim Harbaugh likes him. We know how highly he spoke of Blake Corm in the past. And Austin Eckler's a free agent. They don't have a ton of cap space. Yeah. All of these are little pieces of the puzzle that t- kind of point to a rookie where running do you, back. Where do, if that happens, where do you think he goes in rookie drafts? If he goes I, I think to the Chargers? Chargers I round think he two? could go... T- round two to the Chargers. I think he could go the late goes, first. The like, goes really. stupid. I, don't I know think if he that. could go 110 to one or 110 to 202 range. Would you probably. take him there? I'd be I'd be out on a first round price for sure. I like I I'll think well here's full disclosure too to the audience. I'm a little bit higher on Blake Corum than you guys are, okay. and I told you I, I like him just a little bit more. I I think he's just a really solid running back, and we've talked about. I agree that. with that, yeah. But that's fair. I think I would really consider taking him in that 201, 203 range if he does end up in that situation, especially because I think there is a lot of things to desire out of this running back class, at least for me. I don't think that there's a lot of guys who have the potential to be RB1s. And I think if you reunite him with Jim Harbaugh, I see a ceiling where he could potentially get the usage that we that you talked about with Kyron Williams, sure. where you would want to have the opportunity to be an RB1. That, that would be cool if they reunited for sure. I, I think that... Uh, That's th- like a pipe dream, though, I think. <laughs> I have him in my tier two, and I think that I could probably flux a lot of it based on landing spot. If you tell me that they take Jim Harbaugh's First year there, they take Blake Corum in round two. And now I think that'd be early round two. Yeah, I mean, that would be making a statement for that's, sure. That's 100%. I'm moving him to my running back one, and I'd yeah. probably be com- comfortable in the early second. But I feel like uh, probably I'm going to end up being out because th- who's not going to want Blake Corum if that happens? The yeah, narratives it, are going to be crazy. Well, that's what I'm saying. I think I could see him getting pushed into that first round that's if That's going that back happens. to the OG days, fade the yeah, narrative. Yeah. And listen, you said, you said you don't see a lot of backs in this class that have RB1 upside. I would say... Trey Benson and Marshawn Lloyd were guys that I went in depth on on my individual video last week where I'm like, love their athleticism, they're explosive, they're crazy, you know, the Miles Sanders and DeAndre Swift types. I got real concerns with their vision about how good they are as running backs. And a lot of times, you know, you go to a place like Dan Campbell where he's like, just do your fucking job or else I'm bringing in David Montgomery. That that happens with those guys. But I think they they came in and did exactly what I thought they were in a, in a great way. Like Marshawn Lloyd came in, I think, 220, ran a 446. Yep. Trey yep. Benson... 216 ran a fucking 439. Yeah. yeah. So you're talking about real Trade. athleticism or real explosiveness. Again, like they were 3 4, I think, pre combine. They're probably still 3 4 for me post combine. They confirmed what I, what I liked on tape. Um, so I'm not going to move them, but I do think that type of profile does lend itself to have, you know, like really high upside single yeah. seasons at a time. I do think I, for I a, totally agree with that point, man. I do think for a lot of people, Trey Benson is probably going to move up people's boards because I think a lot of people were looking for reasons to make Trey Benson RB1 in this class, and I do think that that's going to kind of well, push him up there. I know most of us – Adam, are you with Jonathan Brooks RB1 in the class? That's currently my RB1, so yeah. So but I think they found their reason of, if they were looking for one. Yeah, I think we're all there a little bit. as Jonathan Brooks RB1, but I think a lot of people could – Put Trey Benson RB1. There, listen, there's not a lot of separation between a lot of these running backs, so I, I really don't have a huge problem with it. Yep. Love what I saw with Brooks. Uh, I just wanted to highlight, though, yeah. like to Marshawn Lloyd, I think quietly, in my estimation, really killed the combine. Like the production obviously isn't there. Bijan was h- touted from the moment he was born, it feels like. But look at the measurables, man. 446, 36 vertical versus a 37. Little, not quite as much as the broad jump. And I'm not telling you he's Bijan, but like, the di- the difference in cost. He's five nine two twenty. Bijan was five eleven two fifteen. That's some stature. Five nine two twenty. Brother, that is a dude, and he's moving. Like mm-hmm. I think Marshawn Lloyd, uh, if he's in that mid second, like I I'm all of a sudden a lot more bullish. I was throwing out offers late last night, you know, messing around, and that two for, that two oh six is not going anywhere. For those anymore, mid boys. seconds, yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. I'm not like, sending those out anymore. Lloyd, Lloyd again. I th- I really think he like falls into that. Um, in, into that DeAndre Swift type, into that like Travis Etienne mold, you know, like okay, it could happen for you. Kind of to your point, Adam. I, it's not necessarily prospect talk, but let's talk a little bit about like, do you guys really think that the value? I saw some stuff. You, I know you said stay away from X. I saw some stuff the other day Couldn't that was saying the late round or the, uh, the late first round picks have gained a lot of value today. Do you think that? With the combined performances of Brian Thomas, of Xavier Worthy, of those guys, do you think that those first-round picks are worth more today than they were yesterday? 
I would say I don't know that the late first round picks are more valuable, but I will say like the top fifteen to to like eighteen picks, I feel real fucking good about now. I like it's interesting the way you said that was different, but I was going to get to. I guess it depends on relative to what. I think the late first definitely gained a bunch of value, but I also think they didn't gain like separation from the early and mid seconds. So like so draft maybe, capital so, wise, so maybe they actually lost value in that sense. I, I think that the, hmm. the the point is to you what you kind of said. Like the top 15, 18 picks all rise up the board. Like significantly. if I had, if I got if I got like the two hundred two, two hundred three, and the two hundred seven, I'm like fuck yeah, that combine was yeah awesome. I was, and actually to the point that you're just making, I I'm almost if I'm sitting like Nick and fade the fetal as one ten. Can I go down? You can't do it to me, but can I tear down to 202 spots. and get yeah. a plus from you? Yeah. That, so I'd be on that. I think that's the right way of thinking. I, like, you know, personally, like, I, I'd be ecstatic if I got A.D. Mitchell down at the 110 or whatever because I have guys that I, I really, really like there, but they yeah. were there prior to yesterday's combine, but yeah. I could see how a lot of people might jump up and feel more secure with I it. I think especially, too, when we talk about, and, and I think the way we all like to rank players, too, is to tier them. And that's like being able to identify where those tiers are at and move back in those tiers. Almost let your league mates come up and take their guy, but you still get a player in the same tier but get the extra value on top. I think that really helps. I think one of the toughest parts about this class in particular right now, too, is like, and I was responding to someone on Twitter when I put my rankings. They they were asking me about the Penix and Bo Nix. And right now, we have so little information about those two in particular, and yeah. they are kind of like the linchpin in the class where it's like in rankings, they're just like placeholders where yeah. you can't actually, it's hard to really like de the rankings right now because you kind of just got Bo Nix and, and Michael Penix anywhere from like the 110 to the 202, but we don't know what their draft cap is. We don't know what their situation is going to be like because we didn't see anything at the combine. We don't know where they're going to yeah. get drafted kind of thing. So it's like, I feel good about AD Mitchell. I feel good about yeah. Brian Thomas, but I don't know what they're doing, so it's like, what is that? What happens I've, in that tier? I feel like with quarterbacks, especially like over the last couple of draft processes, like you get to the point now where like we don't know anything and we can't really react or do anything for the quarterbacks in general until after pro days at this point. Yeah, I, I mean, you go sub four four, which is what Trey Benson did, barely but did. Okay, and then you you go to his weight and you stay north of that two sixteen or higher. Okay, Brees Hall, John Taylor, wow, Ryan Matthews. Beanie Wells. Beanie Wells, right around the corner. Akron kid, just a kid from Akron. <laughs> uh, Isaiah Pacheco. I mean, dude, mm. it's, let's it's, get spicy. It's a mm. combo of, of yeah. You of don't like, move. You don't, you're not supposed to be six foot, that type of stature, and run in a straight line like that. Yeah. Because to your point, yeah, Keaton Mitchell did that, or Mitchell, but, like, I'm not – I'm not saying that was a bad thing, by the way. For you him. left out the Justin Fargus, Cedric Pierman, and Ben Tate tier. Well, we can give a bitch. <laughs> we can keep going up. I'm just <laughs> yeah, no, no. I mean, I'm just. Uh, it's kind of crazy to think about. Yeah, we expect you. You should be if you're Keaton Mitchell size in the NFL. You yeah. should be blazing. But yeah. when you're that size and you can move like that, the up. I think that's the thing about the 24 class as a whole. I think at every position right now, Brock Powers didn't run, but you could talk about tight end. You could see high end upside. For every single position in fantasy and dynasty football, agreed. That's crazy. The running backs are the, are the ones that I'm most nervous about their ab- about the floor or like them busting. But I do. I actually see a yeah. path with guys like Benson, with Marshawn Lloyd, with Jonathan Brooks, with Braylon Allen, even like. And I'm right. I wouldn't. I wouldn't. I don't think anyone's gonna argue that they're like strong bets. But there's there's definitely ranges of outcomes where some of these guys there's can high be upside high guys. upside. Like Kenneth Walker is in this range, by the way, of, uh, yeah. you know, he smashed for his, uh, in points. It's like his situation is rookie season where he took over at the end of the year and went crazy. So one last guy we should definitely touch on is Jalen Wright running back from yeah, Tennessee. Definitely. I know a lot of people I, were yapping about him. To I me. was going to ask, I, there's Good one call. more guy I want to touch on too. So if yeah. we have time for two, let's do yeah, two. So, what do you got? Go ahead. Jalen Wright, Tennessee guy, 5'10", 210 pounds, runs the four three eight. 38 inch vert like he's a he's a big time athlete yeah did you have you watched any Jalen Wright film I haven't dug as deep into Jalen Wright as I want to so I'm not at the point right now where I'm very comfortable making a stance on Jalen Wright but I I, that's a guy who I have on my list of like I really need to start diving into his tape because he did have a pretty impressive athletic combine here for sure he's uh wildly athletic and there are a lot of times where I'm watching him honestly not too far off in terms of like if you're trying to think about prototype of like the Trey Benson and Marshawn Lloyds where they're so explosive that sometimes they make bad plays and just like turn them into good plays because that's who the fuck they are Mm. I think Jalen Wright he I don't think he's a great inside runner like I don't think that's what he's going to be at the next level uh 
he bounces a lot of runs outside when I don't feel like he needs to. Um, I think he's a little bit impatient because he's so fucking athletic where you'll see a lot of runs where it's like – Bad decisions. Just bad patience. Like he doesn't really want to let the holes open up and he bounces to the outside. And sometimes they work really well, obviously, because when you have four three eight speed, you're going to fucking blaze. Um, but I, I definitely have, his, I have concerns with him as like an early down runner. And, dude, to be honest with you, you know, it's this is kind of a spicy comp. And I, I think there's a better comp for him. Um one, I, th- I think Jerome Ford is, I think, is a good comp for him, okay. where he's like a uh, uh, runway runner. Like, he's not super shifty or anything. He's sure. not a great runner, but you give him a lane, he's probably going to burst through. He could be gone. I also saw a lot of Justice Hill. It's Justice Hill and really? Jalen Wright. Wow. They're actually, if you look, if you look at uh, Justice Hill coming out of school, I don't know if people, like, know this, but they're, they're not too dissimilar in build. Justice Hill was a phenomenal athlete. Yeah. Really fast, really explosive, but just not a great running back. Okie State, yep. Yeah. Yeah, uh, I was going to say, actually, because, you know, it's, it sounds interesting uh, when you talk about Jerome Ford. I think coming out, like Tevin Coleman a lot was that. Um, yes. Like yeah. that type of a – you not really going to make a whole lot of shake, but if you get him in a foot race, he could be gone. And that was what Jerome Ford was this yeah. year for Cleveland when uh, Chubb went down. People were waiting for that opportunity where he's going to lose the role. Ford was All good for All he kept them. doing was being – like he wasn't guaranteeing you a really high floor, but the ceiling was there every week. Hell, yeah. I had a league where I played him uh, – Pretty often, and more often than not, he was nice for me this year. And Jalen Wright, I feel like, falls into that category where, like, his, like, yards after contact number are good, but he's not moving piles. Uh, he, he's less powerful than the Jerome Ford, than the Tevin Coleman type, for sure. That's not his game is, like, trying to run dudes over whatsoever. He's, like, an avoidant type of runner where he's not super shifty. He's not super elusive, but he's fast enough that he can make guys miss just by being so fast and, like, seeing, a, you know, like a, a direction over there that, that will get him out of there. But yeah. I'm not overall in love with his I game. think the way that I'm building teams in Dynasty, and I think a lot of people are going to start doing that, is where they're not investing in the running back early. I, I'm probably knowing that I'm going to be bleeding some value. And typically when I'm matching up versus an opponent at the running back position. But if I'm going to do that, I want high-end upside guys that could – pop off like that I'm, yeah. I'm i'm very in on him probably at cost too yeah right right again right's one of those dudes i think just falls into the category of when you watch him play you know that his best attribute is long speed he's breaking off 60 70 yard runs so like when he does this and runs a 438 shouldn't be like a, a big mover for you yeah agreed you said you had one more guy you want to yap about yeah I have one more it's it's not a running back or a wide receiver it's a tight end but i figure you're, mm. he's a guy that i was pretty excited to see test it's jatavian sanders Jatavian Sanders went in there. He weighed six foot four, two forty five. Kind of everything we wanted to see out of him from the height and weight department. And then he ran a four six nine mm-hmm. at that height and weight. So, have you guys? Did you get a chance to really watch his performance? I know we weren't here watching it that day, but did you guys get to see him at the combine? He was. Yeah, <laughs> I was. I was. Uh, I was. Okay. It was like okay. I'm not like yeah. No, I, I think the tight end class is kind of meh. Kind of meh. Besides yeah. Brock. I think he's just a guy that I was excited to watch at the Combine. I know I spoke about him in the video earlier uh, last week, but it was a guy that I thought athletically he was going to test pretty well. I don't know if he was, at, like, super surprisingly athletic. I think he probably no, should not. have tested a little bit better than he did. But it's Jatavian? Yeah. Yeah. I but mean, that range of, like, mid four sixes to upper four sixes is, I, yeah. I feel like, where a lot of tight ends end up landing. But I, I, my, I just wonder where you guys have him. I think for people that play in tight end premium, which is kind of yeah. mostly what we play in, he's a guy that a lot of people have been considering taking around that mid-second round pick. Yeah. Do you guys still think he sits there? Or you think he's going to fall a little bit more I, down? I actually think I might get more Jatavian now because from, an, from the athletics standpoint, like, he actually – is fine there. He's you, fine. You, see, yeah. he's run, fine. you run He's sub fine. four seven. Yeah, I think you're p- more than a good enough athlete. I think his Raz will check out. But I'll say that uh, actually, I think he he checked the boxes okay. But I think actually his size is not like the greatest thing. But uh, I'm not. I don't have any problem with his forty at four six nine. Yeah, he he's my tight end too. I got him down at twenty seventh overall though. So okay, like so early you, third. Yeah, you got him early third. Yeah. I think some people had him. You know, mid second. I definitely was higher on Jatavian Sanders coming into this. I I don't know if he. I mean, he definitely didn't wow me. So I'm like, I think he's probably a guy based on the other performances at some of the other positions yep. that is going to just by default well, fall down my draft board now. This kid, fucking Theo Johnson out of Penn State, the tight end. Raz God. He yeah. like literally had one of, if not the best tight end combine yeah, of what is, all time. What is Penn State doing? Because I feel like every year they come in and they have like some of the most elite combine performances ever. So good. And I, 
Every they all just remind me. They all I. It's the they're Kisiki all, they're all Mike Kisiki. They're yeah. all Mike Kisiki. They're all shit. <laughs> they're, all <Mike> <laughs> they're all fucking shit. But yeah, that's, that's the only guy that I wanted to talk about too because I know I referenced him in a video earlier this week, so I figured we should kind of talk about how he. I have not I watched know. any Theo Johnson films, so I can't really speak on him. I just know he he's one of those dudes that like post combine. I'm like, okay, I gotta kind of jump Look into because he's fucking yeah. electric on the field. I yeah. I need to dig into it more. Uh, but yeah, his his athletic profile Raz is 99 point. 9.99 out of 10. Yeah. 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 Uh, unfortunately, like, it, I feel like that never pans out. Like, the ultra-athletic <laughs> tight ends that were just, like, not good prospects very rarely, like, actually happens. Yeah. Don't worry. We're going to get a, a nice a nice deep dive. Friday. You'll, you'll get it to you. us. I got y'all. Yeah. Love that. All right. Uh, we're going to wrap it up there. We are also about to film a three-round rookie mock draft based on the combine, which will come out maybe tomorrow, maybe Wednesday, something in the very – upcoming near future so stay tuned for that and make sure you subscribe to the channel to let you know when that drops turn them notifications on subscribe to both of these man's channels as well thank you for hanging out with us i hope you all learned a little bit i hope you know to fade xavier worthy and fade <laughs> bucky <laughs> irving and tell your friends to subscribe to the channel so all those picks you don't like you can see them make hang oh, yeah.